into a tub with a bunch of different people. What are some of the biggest shocks were in your face? So I think it was is kind of hey what is up people so today i'm gonna talk about cultural shocks that you will experience when you move to korea these things are something like surprise foreigners the most when they move to korea all right so first question what are the most common cultural shocks that foreigners experience when they first come to korea actually korean culture is nowadays very famous so i don't think most of the things will be that surprising but Back then, when I was in middle school, when I lived in the States, mowing culture is something that was interesting for my foreigner friends because, you know, like bowing is something not usual thing to do in like Western culture, but in Asian culture, it's something that you do every day. You gotta do it to everyone that you're not friendly with. I mean, even if you're friendly with your boss, I think it's to show your respect, you get a bow. Bowing is not just saying hi, it has more meaning than that. So when you come to Korea, you will see a lot of people bowing. Also, oh yeah, this is the thing that surprised my foreigner friends the most. So in university, I had many foreigner friends who were studying in different school. So when I had a meal with them, one thing they couldn't get along well with was that Koreans share dishes. So when you guys go to restaurant, you guys have your own dishes, right? But in Korea, Korean culture is not like everywhere thing, but it's pretty common to order some foods together and share the foods. Yeah, that will be kind of surprising. I don't know how you guys will feel about this, but don't be offended. And you guys can say no. You guys can say you guys are not comfortable about it. Then the Koreans, us will try to find other way and we will respect that so or you can try to kind of um feel the vibe of koreans as well so yeah let me know how it goes all right next question why do foreigners find korea's hierarchy and respect for elders surprising because hierarchy is much stronger than like western culture it's something i feel surprised too one day i talked with my boss regarding that he got punished by his teachers a lot when he was in middle school. Punished, which means getting hit by, like, so there were teachers who just hit kids, the students, saying like, it's for your good sake. But some teacher were hitting the students to let the kids in a good way. But on the other hand, there were teachers who hit the kids just to relieve their stress or things. So think about it. Like, it's something that I cannot kind of understand because I spent most of my teenager life in United States. And also when I came back to Korea, I went to international school. So it was quite different from Korean schools because Korean middle school and high schools are the places where the teachers start hitting students a lot. And also you can see this kind of hierarchy things in the subway system as well. You gotta respect elders. So when the Koreans are in a chair in a subway and you see elder people standing alone, Koreans usually move out and ask them to sit. I mean, we don't ask them to sit, we just move out so they can sit. Yeah, we offer the seats on transportations. Also, when we drink with elders or the people we met for the first time, we gotta pour the drink for them. I mean, it's a way of showing respect, but also, it's not just pouring the drink. We do that with both hands. And also, interesting thing is this. It's something I didn't know when I was a teenager, but you gotta hide the name of the drink. So the name of the drink cannot be seen to other person. I don't know why, but there is reason for this. Yeah, so you one hand, you gotta hold the bottle, hiding the name tag. So I think those things are some things that can be kind of surprising for Western and like foreigner people. I don't know if other Asian countries do this as well. Leave a comment if you're other Asians. Please let me know if you guys do this as well. All right, next question. What are some of the biggest shocks foreigners face when eating out in Korea? Yeah, as I mentioned in the first question, um, we sometimes share dishes in the same place. We use our own chopstick to get the foods from the shared dishes. 
But nowadays it has kind of developed. So we usually have different chopsticks that we can use to get the foods from the shared dishes. And we have our own dishes for our own, our own plate. So yeah, that can be kind of a way to protect yourself from this culture. Next, why does Korea's work culture feel so different to foreigners? First of all, I heard 9 to 5 is usual work time in your country, in like other Western countries. And also, I think Europeans and like Australian companies have about at least 20 vacation days, annual leaves. In Korea, 15 is normal. So we get about 15 annual leaves every year. So that's pretty different. And we used to work a lot, like whole day, but it has changed. It has improved much better. There is thing called hwesik. You guys all know about this, right? So hwesik is basically eating out with your coworkers. But basically when we say hwesik, we feel like um, drinking is included. So drinking alcohol and like saying the talking about the things that we usually don't talk during the work hours. So we talk about something different. So I think it Hwesik is kind of a good way to be more socialized with our coworkers. So I kind of do enjoy um, having Hwesik with my coworkers. In the Hwesik, I think they might ask you to drink, but even they ask you to drink. If you don't want to drink, you can keep saying no, all right? So don't be forced about that, right? They might ask you a lot. It's kind of like a culture in Korea. They want to drink with you. Let's think it positive. All right, next. How do foreigners react to the fast-paced lifestyle in cities like Seoul? Oh, you guys will be surprised. When you order food in Korea, it can get to your place in like 30 minutes. The fastest I've seen was about taking about 5 to 10 minutes. I was saying like, when did they cook? It got here in like 5 to 10 minutes. I think it was Chinese noodle. Probably they've cooked before we ordered. Maybe it was canceled or something, but yeah. It is that fast. Everything is really fast in Seoul. Also, when you go to office, transferring the subway, that will be walking really fast. So be careful about that. And if you really want to experience the Korean workers vibe, I really do recommend experiencing that. Using subway during 7 to 9 a.m., you will know what I'm saying. Try to go Gangnam Station or like Samsung Station. You will feel this. Or Yeoido. Right, next. What do foreigners find surprising about public behavior in Korea? This is one thing that my friends told me. So my friends told me that public transportations in Korea are much more quiet than other countries. As a Korean, I feel like talking in the subway or like public transportation feels rude. Even when we have to talk in there, we talk really quietly and try our best to not talk that much. But I heard it's different in other countries. I heard they talk quite loudly. Is it true? So yeah, so public behavior, that thing can be kind of interesting. Also, next, why are Korea's beauty standards surprising for foreigners? Yeah, Koreas do focus on appearances a lot. So I heard there are many foreigners who come to Korea to get plastic surgery. And also we have, I mean, many of us have our skincare routines. When I was in the United States, I didn't care about my skin at all. And when I was a teenager, I didn't care about my skin at all. But nowadays, the students in Korea, like even teenagers, they know how to take care of their skin. So, you know, all Asians already look young, but the Asians will look much younger than now, even than now. So, yeah, but why Koreans do care about appearances or that much? I think it's because when we have good appearance, we get better respect, like better services, I think. We get more respected. I think it's the same in other countries, but we know that pretty well, so. Next, how does Korea's unique couple culture shock foreigners? So, when you come to Korea, you will see a bunch of Korean couples holding their hands in the street, but not kissing, not like friends. When you go to a cafe, you will see a bunch of couples sitting together in a cafe, usually in like same row. So, yeah, it happens. So, it will be kind of interesting, I think. 
And also check out the video that I've made regarding dating with a Korean. We Koreans, I mean, I'm not sure about nowadays, but when I was young, like a teenager, I had to celebrate a lot of anniversaries. Like we this thing called tutu. So the 22, 22nd day of the day we start dating. Also, it's 100 days, pekil, and also 1주년, one year anniversary. This kind of thing. So we do have a lot of anniversaries. Also, November 11th is Pepero Day. So we have to eat pepero. We have to give a present Pepero. And we have White Day, which is the day the guys should give candies to girls. And there is Valentine's Day, which is the day girls should give chocolates to guys. And there is some more days like this. I'm not sure about this that much, but yeah, it will be kind of interesting. Start dating with a Korean and try to experience that. All right, next. Why is the drinking culture in Korea surprising to foreigners? So, um, one thing that is really different from drinking with Koreans or drinking for foreigners is that Koreans kind of tend to do cheers a lot. And when I drink with my foreigner friends, we don't do that cheers that much. But when we do cheers as a Korean, there are like two reasons. First, because we want to drink together and we want to make sure that we are enjoying together. Like secondly, kind of like a way of showing the respect and like being more friendly and get rid of the awkwardness. So it is pretty useful when you feel awkwardness in the drinking place. Just do cheers. It's pretty useful. And in all the 20s, we Koreans do play a lot of drinking games. So if you guys come to Korea, try it out. It will be interesting. Next, what surprised foreigners about dating and relationship in Korea? I think I gotta mention this. So in Korea, we usually don't introduce our date to our parents that much. In Western culture, I heard it's pretty common to introduce your date lover to your parents or family, but it's quite different in Korea. It's much more harder to introduce your lover to your parents. It's more special thing to do. So when you date a Korean and the person doesn't introduce you to their parents, you gotta respect that. It's really different. All right. So what challenges do foreigners face when trying to learn and use Korean? Korean is really difficult. So the grammar style is different as well. And also the accent can, I mean, accent is pretty easier than other languages. So yeah. And also we have different ways of saying when you're talking to elders and when you're talking formal or informal. So there are difference like that. So these things can be quite, 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 quite hard. Yeah. Now, last question. What tips would you give foreigners to help them deal with cultures in Korea? So when you come to Korea, please be open-minded. Um, although most of Korean cultures are shared in all around the world nowadays, I think it's a different country and we all have raised in different culture. So we all do know that um, there are things we think differently, which are not bad thing because I think that's one part of living in this world. Like we are raised in different culture and share that as a friends. That's a good way to become friends with people. So when you come to Korea, just try to enjoy that. And even when the some those kind of culture shock kind of attacks you in some ways, try to be positive and like try to understand that. And please understand that and be nice. Also, small things that I didn't mention during this video was you guys might all know, but you guys get to remove your shoes when you go into your friend's house. And also we ask about ages and like MBTI in like, I don't know, those things quite easily compared to other countries. So be careful. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to talk about it. Please tell them to respect you. All right. And also one thing I would definitely recommend you to try when you visit Korea is trying jjimjilbang. Dude, like I've seen some of foreigner people trying jjimjilbang, but they, oh God. Yeah. Because they have to be naked. They've changed their clothes and go to jjimjilbang and come back to their, the, in my case, come back to male's public bath house and take off your clothes and you guys go into a tub with a bunch of different people which sounds quite wrong but yeah that's korean culture man all right so that's it that's all that's it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed it 
and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.